you never get a second chance at a first impression. This is how I became confident from the outside in by dressing better. Welcome to the battlefield of love. What if I told you that you could communicate with somebody from literally a mile away, maybe not that fast, a little bit closer, just by how you dress, that you can cause these people to have an impression of you. The experts say that nonverbal communication is 70 to 93%. So what we say is less important than how we dress, how we communicate, how we speak, what we're saying with our body, our body language, with how we're expressing ourselves through our clothing. See, when I found myself in that situation, I was in my 30s and I'm a single dad and I'm dating and I wanna put my best foot forward. I'm like, well, I've gotta go all in on this because I only have so many first impressions and I need to make them count. And this not only goes, uh, it doesn't only apply to, to dating, but also in life. How do you want to be treated? I've gotten jobs, I've gotten uh, better interviews. You, know, you put yourself in a better light when you show up. Service, that's for sure. You, you definitely get noticed and unfortunately that's that's what our society is like we do judge people by how they dress we do judge people by certain non verbal dick mentor philip Folsom, he has this great quote he says uh the best time to have a map is before you go into the woods but if you're anything like me you get lost and then you're trying to figure out where the map is, right? Mentors like that, you know, giving you little nuggets of wisdom all the time. Which also made me think about how uh, Jocko, Jocko Willink, for those of you that don't know, he's a, he's a Navy SEAL. He's got his own podcast, the Jocko Podcast. Really awesome if you ever get a chance, go check it out. Uh, he talks about war stories from uh, first-hand accounts. Uh, being a a veteran and a warfighter, it's amazing to get how he distills the information and makes it relevant for uh, today. Anyways, what Jocko says is that when you're in combat, the the first thing you need to know is where you are on that map. Because if you can't figure out where you are, you're definitely not gonna know where you're going. That's bad. And even worse is you don't know where you wanna end up at. Thing that sucks about finding yourself on that map it involves telling yourself the cold, hard truth. And my truth is I'm overweight. I got a personal trainer. I'm working on it. It's It's been a, a battle. <laughs> it's been something I've, I've been fighting all my life. And it's not the working out. It's the nutrition and consistency. Justin, that's my trainer. If you're watching this, bro, I appreciate you. This man goes to war with me every freaking day. So he knows. The three main things that I learned. One main thing that overrides the whole thing is you're being intentional. You're doing it on purpose. Nothing happens really by accident. I mean, here and there you get lucky, but... For example, when I decided to start this this channel, right? I was like, all right, I want to be intentional. I want to put myself in the best light. My wife bought me the 
14 day film creator course uh, with Anthony Gallo and I got to work right the, the the whole lighting and the microphone and all the setup is intentional so I could put my foot my best foot forward so that my message can be received better that's one thing I've always been implementing is putting your best foot forward going out and getting the knowledge that you don't have do I want to become a videographer or anything no but this is the stuff that you need to learn to get your message across which I'm doing now if you're hearing me on the podcast I got some visuals today um, I'm wearing a red undershirt I'm wearing a, a, a gray and red argyle sweater with a charcoal accents I got a stainless steel folio watch with a black strap and it's um, the face is like matte stainless steel and the actual hands are red okay I have a red puka shell neck or um, bracelet with the red tassels on it I've got my red driving cap and this is my uh, power outfit. Um, I actually combine it with these socks. They're, they're poker socks. The gray matches the sweater. Spade. And the clubs are black. The, the hearts and the diamonds are red. And it has a little bit of charcoal on the, uh, on the feet and the heel. So this is my, my power outfit. Uh, the other day in K4 on one of the zoom calls we were we were talking about that about like your power outfit like what makes you feel the best what is your calling card and this this is mine right I wear it with some dark jeans and some really cool boots or if I want to not be so high fashion i just you know jeans and some some like nice clean white or gray shoes when i found myself on that map i was like crap i don't know who i've become i've let myself go because in high school i was a break dancer and a raver and i was very very expressive with my fashion and it was just to get attention and so you wouldn't look at me you would just look at my style and I would get a reaction from that David Goggins mentions the same thing in his book can't hurt me where he would like do crazy hairstyles and just to get reactions from people, just to to get ahead of them making fun of you, you're intentionally doing something to cause reactions from them. Um, another thing that Jocko mentioned, he uh, he's a big fan of About Face by uh, David Hackworth. And he mentions that when the guys would stop caring about shaving, not care about their uniforms, that's when everything would go downhill. And I remember catching myself being a freaking slob, you know, just just going days without shaving unless, you know, we had somewhere to go. Wearing just big old t-shirt and some basketball shorts and some chanclas for those of you that don't speak Spanish for some you know slip on sandals convenience and then I wondered why I wasn't being attractive to my wife anymore right like I wasn't putting any intention into dressing better and I'm not saying you have to wear a tuxedo around the house but guys 
if you just upgrade just a little bit and I understand being comfortable and you know function over form or function over fashion I get it I'm a steel I'm a steel worker I work with sheet metal but when I am home or we have date nights or whatever you got to learn to dress it up if you want to keep your woman engaged and you want her to brag about see the whole thing is is by you dressing better people perceive you in a better light this has happened to me time and time again you get better service um, one of the guys that I took course from uh, Ryan Majin is a 59 51 handsome guy secrets course uh, he no longer does it anymore. He's a powerhouse in the, especially in the TikTok space, but in the social media space. But before he did all that, he was teaching guys how to dress better to get dates. Uh, another resource I had was uh, Antonio Santino. I took a course from him in 2011, 2012. It was called... Uh, the timeless style course and he goes on everything on 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 every piece Antonio Santino if you ever need anything on fashion on cologne that's that's the guy you want to go to freaking amazing on top of the fact that he's a former marine Semper Fi but I learned a lot from these guys And in, uh, to quote another great man, Bruce Lee, who says, uh, absorb what is useful, discard what is not, add what is uniquely your own. So there is principles in, in, in fashion and all that. But at the end of the day, it's your calling card. It's what, what you want to show, right? There's... There's do's and don'ts, there's exceptions to the rules and all that, but what makes you more comfortable, right? I learned from them, my favorite, that's this is from Ryan Majin, is always dress a level above of where you're going. That's one of my, uh, one of my favorite quotes that I got from him but lessons that I learned from him is not just you know be one level will be dressed one level above but like intentionally go in there knowing that like hey you know like I'm 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 going a little bit above everybody else and you're gonna stand out and that's how you stand out and it's not a thing of of pride or or ego I mean it, I'm not gonna say it doesn't doesn't touch on that but when you put your mindset at being one level above the rest it's a freaking amazing view uh, Jocko calls it like detaching right taking a step back and looking up so when you're able to take a step and look back and be looking at everything going on you have a better a better view that's number one dress one level above the rest number two especially for your for you bigger guys i i i'm in that category fit is everything fit matters more than brand matters more than price etc 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 how it fits you and the way it's supposed to fit you is snug. It's supposed to show your body shape. I know. I used to wear the triple X, quadruple X shirts to try to cover the gut. But you look like you're wearing a muumuu. You look like you're wearing a tent. It makes you look way fatter. When you show off your figure, your form, it doesn't make you look as big. Because it doesn't just go from your shoulders, chest, and then big old 
fabric trying to cover your gut it just makes you look twice as white number three is try to wear solid colors if you can get away from the logos those big huge logos that punch you in the face i'm not talking about the little crocodile or the little polo or whatever right i'm talking about those like if you guys remember back in the the beginning ufc days there was this brand called affliction like and you knew what they were uh tap out too but affliction they were just gaudy they were just like you know had all these designs and were supposed to look like regal with um rhinestones and all kinds of crazy shiny uh, materials on their shirts anyways one thing that we was uh, a tagline from k4 is pride to honor prince to king meaning you're going from a adolescent psychology to a a mature adult psychology right you're not dressing like a kid anymore you know you're not you're not brandishing these brands and, and trying to get this crazy attention you want to have a look that can withhold the test of time that will be your look and it will make you stand out and make you feel good like i love red i've been told that you know blues and greens goes with my eyes and all that so i try to try not to go too crazy with the red but i love red it's it's, it's my power color it's i'm a leo right or whatever and <laughs> you know fire is your um what is it is your element okay i just love red it's my favorite color that sword in the background uh my friends gave it to me way back when got a red sheath on it and red handle and so yeah red is my thing um again going to to what bruce lee said is add what is uniquely yours this is not something that the guys that i studied under you know mentioned but i like coordinating i like having at least three things that coordinate right so in my outfit again i have a red bracelet i have the socks i have the shirt that matches the same as the sweater and then the hands on the clock have a little red accent to them so like that makes me feel a little bit more confident i'm a little bit more put together so if we show up and you know somebody could be coordinating right but like that little detail on that watch it's something that makes me feel better and know that I'm like, I'm intentional about it. And if somebody picks up on it, that's also a little litmus test where I can be like, okay, they're paying attention. If you're going on a date, that's even better because you're communicating subconsciously that like, whoa, this guy pays attention to detail. Actually, like these tassels get out of, you know, some of them get tugged and pulled or whatever. So I've got to trim them, right? Attention to detail. Again, going back to the conversation we're having in K4 on the Zoom call about your power suit, about all that. Something came up and uh, Philip Folsom mentioned. When you look at nature, when you look at the male, for example, the uh the peacock right it's got these big bold beautiful feathers these colors they're vibrant and it's like you know right the peahen does not have the same thing um in nature the males usually have the brightest colors right um Sometimes they have like these very ornate, intricate horns. And when I was looking into that, I figured out it's called the secondary sexual trait for the male species. And that's the, um, the reason it's, it's designed that way. So you can increase your ability to attract mates. 
also it it shows that like because in nature you want to camouflage right you don't want the whatever is hunting you to be able to chase you down but like for instance in the in the peacocks situation he's showing the peahen like hey check this out i can come out and flash and i'm strong i can survive no matter what so that's a really biologically enforced thing that we as men need to take advantage of right and uh, <laughs> zz top says <laughs> you know the girls go crazy over a sharp dressed man and i could not agree anymore but let me go a little bit deeper into that because when you're dressing sharply you are you're being bold but you're also being authentic right like i mean you could i could dress like somebody else and and or have somebody dress me like whatever something that i'm not used to like uh like the biker look right i could wear a, a leather jacket and torn up jeans i actually have some harley boots those are really cool but that's a different story but i'm not i wouldn't be authentic in my in how i came out like would i feel a little badass probably but it's not who i am right this is what i'm used to like you know it's uh it's climate controlled so if it gets cold i just roll the sleeves down if it's a little hot especially here in southern california uh you know i wore my sleeves up and i'm good but it's all about authenticity it's all about boldness it's gonna cause you to step out of your comfort zone you know and that's really what matters is how authentically you're showing up and if i didn't show up authentically it would show right it, it shows most people don't don't notice it they have this you know ostrich head in the sand observation or the way of they see the world where it's like you know just because i can't see it, it doesn't exist type of thing right and it's like dude be more intentional about your clothes it's not going to come overnight this well let me let me give you a real quick uh summary of like the stuff that i got the shirt is a good good fellow and company good fellow and co from target it's probably like 10 bucks the hat same thing target good fellow and co maybe like 14 bucks these uh uh this shirt this i'm sorry this sweater it's an argyle sweater i got it from the thrift store i don't know maybe like three bucks six bucks um the folio watch i got at kohl's i uh, couldn't have been more than like twenty dollars um you know these are stainless steel rings you know 20 to 40 bucks this actual this pinky ring let me see if we can zoom in on it it's uh there you go it's i found it i found it in your house right and i was like you know what it's my pinky i'm gonna wear it it's got some fake some fake qz's in it they all fell out and that's just my look the bracelet was i don't know probably five bucks i don't even know where i bought this bracelet at maybe like dd's Dee discount um i'm always looking for stuff to to add to my my wardrobe but again be intentional be well put together it shows you will attract more than just potential mates it's conversation starters you you get to see where you are in the pecking order of things and 
sometimes I'm in rooms with CEOs and combat vets, you know, that have done a lot of amazing things. And I run a, a Zoom call with a couple of the guys from K4. Just dressing better helps me feel better, helps me feel more confident. And it kind of gives me a little edge. And that's sometimes that's all you need is that little edge. One of the quotes that, that you know keeps popping up is, does man make the clothes or do the clothes make the man? Seeing that it was attributed to Mark Twain from Mark Twain's short story, The Czar's Soliloquy. Crap, say that three times fast. Mark Twain's short story, The Czar's Soliloquy. And it reads like this, quote, one realizes that without his clothes, a man would be nothing at all. That the clothes do not merely make the man. The clothes are the man. That without them, he is a cipher, a vacancy, a nobody, a nothing. There is no power without clothes. If this has been helpful to you, if this is, has impacted you in a way, please like, please subscribe, share this, share this with a big dude, share this with your guy that you want to dress better. I would really appreciate it. It would help me out with the algorithm and check out some more of my stuff.